This program is recorded and presented by Chippewa Valley Community Television. The audio for this program can be heard on WRFP LP 101.9 FM. Chippewa Valley Community Television presents Your Local Race. Meet the Candidates 2016. Hi, I'm Bob Brown, News Director at Chippewa Valley Community Television. Welcome to another in our series of interviews with candidates for seats on the Eau Claire City Council. Today we're going to be speaking with Tim Tewalt. Tim was appointed last June to fill the seat of the late Dave Duax in the District 1 on the city's northeast side. Tim, welcome today. Thank you. Thanks for being here. It's Why don't pleasure. you start by telling the voters a bit about yourself? That's always a question. Uh, one thing, I'm a North Sider. Started my family in 1991 when my wife and I got married. Then we had children and, and uh, just love that part of town, love being part of it. Go Huskies, you know. <laughs> and then, um, then I also work in the town. I work at Chippewa Valley Tech College. I've been an instructor, program director there for quite some time in the industrial mechanics where people learn how to fix and repair things and, and it keeps our automated plants, our manufacturing and maintenance going. Okay. What kind of personal qualities do you, do you feel that you bring to the council that's a benefit to, to their deliberations? Yeah, the, the personal qualities, one, I really do care about uh, Eau Claire. I think it's a great place. Again, got to raise my family here, got to see all the benefits. And as I, I'm one to ponder those things. Things like pools and activities just don't happen. And so it's a way to give back. That's one of the qualities. I have a very servant attitude. I think the other qualities that um, I help, I'm a, I'm a critical thinker, I'm creative, I love to work with uh, a diverse group of people to try and find solutions. Okay. Now, you've been on the council for a relatively short time now, but are there anything, any accomplishments that you've had in that short time as a council member that you're particularly proud of? Yeah, I am. Uh, one of them is our, our fire station number 10, which is on the northeast side, mm -hmm. and the question was, were we going to replace it or where we can go down to five stations and I was able to put through um, uh, a motion and it got carried to keep, maintain six stations build a new one that thing's 43 years old uh, that modern fire trucks don't fit in it and in safety and care uh, of fires and those emergencies minutes mean lives mm -hmm. so keeping that that's a really nice accomplishment okay how about if you if you are uh, re-elected to that seat on uh, April 5th Things that you'd, uh, anything particularly you're looking forward to accomplishing in the next term? Um, you know, I'm, I'm more, less of one of agenda and more of ideals and goals. So to make good decisions, to be able to balance the need for our community to grow and have the things we need and to help people have great lives. Okay, all right. Uh, how about, uh, are there areas of the city, uh, city operations or the council's procedures that that you have seen that maybe you could suggest changing for reasons of uh, efficiency or others? You know, um, I think when we start in something, we always have preconceived notions. And I have to tell you, our city is well run. I'm just really impressed by it. So uh, the, the council handbook, which is a good read in my opinion, you can just see the thought and dedication of councils before refining that. And we're doing another policy, so the council helps direct itself um, by putting that together. And no, I, I don't have a lot of things. I think I really like that we have uh, Monday night where people can come and talk. Uh, Tuesday night we vote on things. Um, the law says we only need to be one night, but it's the best way to serve the public. Okay. Now, uh, city government covers a lot of different uh, things. There's the budgeting process, economic development, you've got the police department, fire department, yep. uh, parks and, and uh, forestry. Uh, are there parts, what parts of the, of the, of the many different aspects of, of city government that you find that you're particularly interested yeah. in? Yeah, um, there's three parts that I really connect to. Um, one is economic development. One is safety with uh, police and fire and, and health. And the other one is the parks and rec. I think those three things really tie together. If you want to have a great place to live, you've got to have that safety and insurance to have that. If you want to have a great place to live, you need jobs and you need recreation. And those are three areas that I, if I had favorites, I would pick those. Okay. Uh, now, either, either you know, during your sh short time on the council so far or even before then, were there council actions that, you, that were taken that you were particularly supportive of? You know, um, 
yeah, let me think on that. There was, uh, mentioned the fire station. I think the Lismore is a great example of economic development. I think the Confluence is a good example of building partnerships with multiple partners to have things. Um, well, we'll always have different opinions, what should we do? We will probably agree we should be doing something. And those are some really good ones where they've continued to find ways to grow the city and to develop a, a infrastructure. Okay. How about the flip side of that coin? Are there actions that the council have taken in recent memory that you were strongly opposed to? Um, no, I mean, one would, I would love a food truck to be active in the council meetings so I could eat. But, <laughs> but that's more, more just. I'm not really one to be strongly opposed. I think it is the understanding of politics, which I would define as people working with people. What one person has for a need isn't somebody else's. So I think they've made good decisions. They're always going to fall somewhere uh, short, but I, I find it a good group to work together with and find those solutions. Okay. Now, the, the city, like uh, seemingly all units of, of local government, in recent years, the funding from state and other sources has been on the decline, uh, creating budget, budgeting issues. How do you go about you know, helping the council deal with those kinds of fiscal constraints? Yeah, that is a wonderful tension that our state legislators have, have given us, that uh, we can't move the tax or the levies as we used to be able to do to meet a need that might come up. And so one, you start with having a very efficient government. Two, realizing we're in the service business. We have people, which are jobs, which are salaries, and we have certain expenses. We're fixing some sewers and roads. The last time the sewer was looked at was 1890. It's about time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, well, you put in a street, you're gonna have to replace it some years later. Mm -hmm. I think the, uh, the, the call for the council is to really look at things what are essential things we need to do to keep this quality of living? How can we apply for grants and other things to help feed that? And perhaps how can we get partnership monies maybe to help foster an area? Okay. Now, uh, the other city council elections uh, this, this spring are for at-large seats. How do you, as, as someone who, who has been representing a district, is there a tension there between those representing the city as a whole and those representing just portions of the city? There is, and then there's sometimes where, some clear things where you have to represent the whole city. It's maybe a parking ordinance. Well, that may not be in our district, but you need to be a vote. There's other things that, that's some really neat activity happening over in this, but how do we get that in our district or what fits our district? And so there's a natural balance of that, of representing this district, but in truth, we all have equal votes, so you're representing the city as well. So it's, uh, it's a good tension to have. Um, the first obligation is to the district, and then the second is to see how does that fit in the plan of the city. Uh, for District 1, uh, are there issues coming up in the next term that you think that are particularly of interest to the, to the residents of your district? Um, I think there's always impactful ones. Um, where will new roads be? When are they going to be repaired? I think that's one that always impacts as all the town. I, I don't think there's a, uh, a pressing issue that is unique to just to the district. Um, there's some development that can be done and has, has been approved for the area. Uh, one I like to really highlight is the, uh, you know, the wonderful, uh, we've got some new things going with the Pinehurst uh, Hill area where there's recreation taking place and we've partnered with them to help make some things happen. Okay, okay. Uh, well, Tim, we've covered a lot of issues, but I'm sure there are many others that will be coming forward in the future. Uh, any last thing that you'd like the voters to know about you as they head into the booth on, uh, on April 5th? Yeah, there are. Um, I've been described as a person who's um, a good thinker, a cooperator, uh, one who has just sincere interest to do well. Um, I would probably, if I had four points, I would put them, I'm a forward thinker, I'm somebody who's collaborative, I have a can-do attitude, and I really love Eau Claire. Okay, great. Yeah. Well, Tim T. Walt, rep representative of District 1, seeking re-election, good luck. And thank, thank you. for coming in today. And thank Appreciate you for watching. Uh, we hope that you will get informed about the issues and do your civic duty on April 5th, go out and vote. And that night, be sure to tune in to Cable Channel 994 for uh, the latest in, in the election returns. 
And before the election, tune in for all the city council candidate interviews. And uh, also we'll be uh, broadcasting uh, candidate forums. So we'll hope to see you there on Channel 994. Thank you very much. This program was recorded and presented by Chippewa Valley Community Television. Chippewa Valley Community Television is made possible by continuing community support. If you would like to volunteer or make a donation, you can contact us by calling 715-839-5067 or on the web at www.cvctv.org.